an artist based in County Clare and I work with film and sculpture and a bit of sound, occasionally painting, to make multimedia installations. I'm originally from Dublin, um, but I moved to Wexford and I was quite young. And yeah, I would say that it definitely has had an impact on how I make work. I was very lucky I grew up by the beach in Wexford and I've kind of been watching the coast as it's been shifting and changing over time. Uh, I guess I've been kind of growing alongside it and that's been a really wonderful thing. Yeah, I wouldn't say my work is focused solely on the context of the beach, but it's definitely where everything kind of started for me. It's where I learned how to notice things or where I learned how to collect visual information and, and bring it back. And that's been really special. Yeah, I guess I've always been kind of gravitated towards um, art and towards biological sciences. I didn't really start to fuse the two together until I came to college, doing my undergrad uh, in fine art. I really feel like we had those four years to learn what it was that we wanted to make work about and we had the freedom to you know understand how we wanted to experience our own practices so I guess it happened quite naturally. If I look back on it now it seems to be a very linear path to to the work that I'm making now but it was I guess it was a lot of experimentation and also I think because I was developing my practice through that sort of academic context I, I was always kind of forced to engage in that critical reflection, you know, constantly having to ask myself what is it that I want to know um, and that was something that's been really helpful I think. My studio at the moment is in the Burn in County Clare, in the Burn College of Art, which is where I'm studying for my MFA in Art and Ecology and I feel really lucky because it's a really big space and uh, there's loads of room there and anything's kind of possible. My studio, I think any space that I work in goes through a lot of changes over time because at the start, if I'm just in the researching phase, all I really need is a corner to kind of read and collect research and do some drawings. And then as I get into maybe the experimental stage, things start to expand and it's very chaotic and there's loads of things all over the floor and materials and equipment everywhere. Once work starts to come out of that, I have to pull everything back so I have the space to look at it properly. And there's lots of jars of really suspicious liquids. There's always something in there that smells terrible, but it's really nice because, you know, I have the room to set up different experiments at the one time and then I get to kind of fold them into each other as time goes on. The process ends up being more valuable to me than maybe the work itself when it eventually turns out. Once I kind of notice something in a landscape and I take it back, I like to go on really deep dives of information and that's where ideas kind of start to come out. And it can get a bit daunting at times because I end up down maybe 10 different rabbit holes of information, but that's when the most interesting ideas come out for me anyway. There's kind of two different aspects to what is inspiring my practice at the moment. Firstly is the idea of new materialism, and um, so the idea that every earthly object carries with it its own meaning and significance. I engage with that a lot at the start of a project, so if I'm maybe foraging for materials I try to stay really aware of the history of the place and the meaning that's wrapped up in the material. I think then the biggest influence when I'm actually developing a project is science fiction. I really like how these projected futures are always about defamiliarizing everyday life and they use really hyper-saturated colours and strange landscapes and really weird creatures. Um, I think science fiction is a really powerful way of maybe pulling us away from the contemporary world so that we can maybe look at it with fresh eyes and that's really important to me. The materials that I use are definitely dictated by the space that I'm in, the place where I am and what's available to me. One thing that I do always come back to is clay because I feel like that's a really powerful symbol to show our interconnectivity with the planet. It's where everything comes from and it's where everything eventually returns. And once I've made something with it, I do like to use film, maybe a bit of sound to abstract what I've made from it and you know create that distance between the object and the screen. 
I made these mini kind of worlds or landscapes. I was collecting clay and filtering it and I knew I wanted to include another material um, that was significant to the space. I saw all of the seaweed that had been washing up along the coast and I found out that it was oarweed and bladder rack mostly. Bladder rack particularly is a type of seaweed that has alginate in it. That's a naturally occurring polymer, which means you can make plastic from it. So I've been making uh, bioplastic out of the seaweed and kind of parallel to that then, I've been collecting water from turlocks in County Clare, but there's a really interesting biodiversity going on in the area of the turlocks. So I found that in the jars of water that I collected, there was all these little creatures swimming around called copepods. And I've been placing the jars over a spotlight and recording them and seeing what they do and the way they move. So I've been kind of placing the two mini worlds together and seeing what happens with them. I think anyone that makes work about the more than human world, they have to a viewer is going to see or connect that to climate change in some way. So I feel like every artist kind of that works with nature anyway has a very delicate balance to strike because you know you don't want to shout something at someone because they don't want to hear it or you don't want to whisper it to them because they might miss it. So I think yeah everyone's kind of trying to find a language I guess that cuts through that. Yeah I do like to work within dark spaces as well and um, I think kind of within a dark space there's some sort of like I don't know, your reality is suspended for a minute um, and kind of that's when your imagination can kind of kick in and I think imagination and maybe a little bit of confusion are really useful tools in unlocking certain spaces in your brain and opening yourself up to new experiences and that's what this is all about, right? You know, unlocking new paradigms of thinking. Oh, I only have really fond memories of art when I was a kid, uh, or art in school. I always had really good teachers, which I suppose was really helpful. Yeah, art was the one class that I just never wanted to end in school. You know, time stood still. When I was leaving school, when I was trying to think of what I wanted to study, I was really torn because I was trying to decide between studying art and studying science and the two of them seemed so different to me, you know, it was like Sophie's choice, I was like, I just couldn't decide. I eventually studied art because I, I knew that it's just I never wanted the time making art to end so I knew that's what I needed to do. It was only when I went to college that I learned that I could pair the two together. I didn't really know in school that I could take everything that I was interested in and I could funnel that into my practice. Yeah, I think that's definitely something that's really important for people to know if they want to study art when they leave school. Art is something that I can channel all of my frustrations and hope and maybe hopelessness, especially about the planet now because I've always cared for it. It means a lot to me that I can spend every day doing what I want to do, which is researching and finally getting to what I want to understand about the world and that's a, yeah, that's definitely not something that I, that I take for granted.